Charles is. Eric is leading <laughs> with his restricted Pokemon. Groudon and Xerneas out into the field. It's top four. He's here for business. And on the left-hand side, Javier going for Lunala and Tapu Fini. <laughs> no jokes on this one. No jokes. <laughs> uh, Eric is starting uh, with his strongest Pokemon out there. Not, no Mega Gengar coming to lock. Uh, and Javier uh, leading with Tapu Fini and having Rayquaza in the back. Mm -hmm. Always threatening a potential switch in with the ER lock ability. Yes. And we've seen what Terry MC uh, from that type of thing is on Javier's side already, so it's threatening the Groudon. I really like that play, like it kind of pushes Groudon to protect or switch out at the right at the beginning. So uh, Lunala is pretty kind of free to uh, take care of the Xerneas, and we've already mm -hmm. seen that this Lunala in particular is a really tricky one. Exactly, it's holding that choice scarf can go for something like a Magic Room, and we've seen previously how well Magic Room can shut down a Xerneas and make it sort of force not to click that Geomancy button because it will have to go for the two-turn move. Um, of course, as you've identified there, I love this turn zero, the big offensive pressure that Javier was pulling. But instead, Tapu Fini just going to go for a protect, maybe scouting yep. out what Eric wants to do with his Groudon and being really brave. It's not protecting, it's staying on the field. As Lunala jumps up into the air, goes for a Moongeist Beam. This is the move that's going to be locking into with that choice Scarf going into that Xerneas. Does a huge amount Whoa. of damage. Critical <laughs> hit as well. As Xerneas goes for the Geomancy here, so Eric playing it so bravely, not worrying about any of the pressure that Javier was going for. Goes for Geomancy, not scared of Magic Group. And particularly with now these defenses boost that it's got up, doesn't have to worry um, about taking another Moon Guys Beam. It's going to be able yeah. to do that like a champ going forward. But I want to see what this Groudon's going to do. Oh, uh, Eric is already doing the reads. Like, like mm -hmm. this is uh, a really well turn. Like uh, going for the Geomancer turn one uh, is really huge. He has now the, the big offensive pressure. Even though the Precipice Blades missed on uh, the Lunala not breaking the Shadow Shield, which is really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But now Vexernius pressures the Tapu Fini a lot, which takes away the pressure from the Groudon, yes. uh, which helps him uh, a whole lot. Now Moongai's Beam does less damage to Xerneas and obviously can not take out the Groudon. Uh, so it was really good turn for Eric this turn. Exactly, that Xerneas being boosted up as well will threaten any Rayquazas wanting to cheekily switch in. Um, Tabu Finney going to take a huge amount of damage from that Moonblast, able to hang on though. Um, so unless it gets followed up by that Groudon, Tabu Finney will be able to do something in this turn. Going to take um, the Moon Guys Beam going into the Groudon on this particular turn. Lunala jumping out of the way once again, sort of tricking us with the animation floating up above but yeah. Tapu Fini is going to have to take that Precipice Blades and will be KO before it's able to do anything for Javier so losing that big supportive Pokemon for him going forward could be critical particularly when you've got that Xerneas on the field if yeah. you're Javier you've got to now bring in a Pokemon that's going to help you play around this um, potentially something like the Togedomaru maybe maybe Eric is not liking the fact that uh, the Shadow Shield from Lunala is still intact, kind of unfortunate there, uh, but he, I think he's still in the in the uh, driver's seat at the moment. Like Groudon is not pressured uh, by Moongai's beam enough, but uh, Javier got uh, a free switch in to Metagross. Mm -hmm. uh, if he if he wants to take care of uh, Xerneas later on, he can now double up into the Groudon yes. and pressure it. Uh, if Eric wants to take uh, um, uh, make predictions mm -hmm. about that, he may want to start attacking with Exernius and, and again getting chip on the Lunala and chip on the Metagross. Uh, let's see how they decide on doing it. Well, Xerni is finally able to break the Shadow Shield on Lunala, going for that Dazzling Gleam. Metacro is able to take it, um, as Lunala does go for another Moongeist Beam. If this is going into the Groudon, it's not going to be enough to pick up the KO, though, without a critical hit. Um, so Metagross will be being left exposed. Um, is it going to be a critical? No. It's Metagross going for the Hammer Arm, though. This is an interesting move indeed. Going to go straight into that Groudon. Will pick up the KO, thanks to um, it being a faster there. Going to reduce its speed, though, going forward. This is always a really good move to use in something like a Trick Room environment. Yeah. That could be a nice little niche to have it in. Um, but I think removing that Groudon, protecting that Metagross, able to go for something like the Bullet Punch even going yeah. forward, um, will be amazing. I was looking previously, what's the Fake Out user? What could he bring in? Thinking about Togedomaru, but Metagross so much better off here. Um, of course, now that Metagross has Mega Evolved as well, it's gonna have to take this intimidate. Yeah, I really, I really do like uh, the play by Javier, uh, knowing that he can take care of the Xerneas later on mm -hmm. and doubling into the Groudon. Uh, uh, but I really do like the Incineroar switch <laughs> in uh, from Eric as well. Uh, he got the fake up pressure now. Uh, the Shadow Shield from Lunala is broken. That's why he wants to preserve it maybe, to lock it into a different move. 
Uh, and Ray Quaza is coming in there. Yeah, Risky Ray jumping in here. Uh, Metagross <laughs> going straight for the Protect, though. So potentially Javier thinking that Metagross is going to be the target of a Fake Out Moonblast or something mm -hmm. like that. Instant going for the Fake Out indeed into that Protect. So this could be a safe switch in here for the Ray Quaza. But no, Vernius oh. is able to catch it on the switch in with a Moonblast. Oh, it oh. hangs on there. Just hanging on there. So Rayquaza is able to jump in, focus Sash. Oh. That Rayquaza has just saved the day for itself a little bit yeah. there. A special attack will be dropped, but it does leave Javier free to now go for something like an extreme speed, um, particularly as the Rayquaza's managed to get in unintimidated. That could be a way to work around the Xerneas. Yeah, and, and uh, those are the situations now where you pressure like Xerneas uh, a lot to the point where it wants to protect. And if you get that right, you can double up into uh, the partner Pokemon mm -hmm. of uh, that Xerneas, uh, which might be really interesting if that Rayquaza uh, carries like an earth power and we've seen hammer arm from Metagross coming mm -hmm. so we do see the protect yeah, Protect from Xerneas doesn't want to take something like the Extreme Speed if that's what that Rayquaza has got. But instead, Dragon Ascent going to go straight into this Incineroar. Um, going to obviously reduce the defensive stats on that Rayquaza. But if that Metagross can go for the Hammer Arm, that's going to easily follow up into that yeah. Incineroar. And I believe pick up the KO. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Critical hit as well for a little bit of style points. Obviously, Metagross's <laughs> speed dropping right down, but it's picked up two KOs with that move now. Uh, this is like really huge. Uh, Javier got the turn right this mm -hmm. time around, like Eric protecting the Xerneas, uh, knowing that Extreme Speed plus a Bullet Punch would have taken it out. Uh, Javier can still go for that uh, <laughs> later on if he wanted to, uh, so he can preserve the Metagross to take care of the Xerneas. Uh, so uh, Javier, uh, Eric is down to two Pokemon, while Javier still got three Pokemon Rayquaza uh, hanging in there. Uh, Lunala doesn't want to switch in that hard into a Dazzling Gleam, maybe. Mm -hmm. But oh, oh we oh. see the double protect, yeah, yeah, yeah because we see the double. Yeah, unfortunately doesn't get it, and that bullet point punch gonna go straight into that Xerneas, pick up the KO, and it's gonna be Tapu Fini against the rest of Javier's team here. Xerneas are applying, obviously, a lot of pressure, but as you said that Javier had the utensils in his team to be able to start applying pressure to those Fairy-type Pokemon. Another Dragon Ascent powerful coming out from Rayquaza, gonna do over 50% to Tapu Fini, as it goes for an Icy win. So again, quite a standard move to have on Tapu Fini at the moment, particularly as that Rayquaza, yeah. um, I mean, it's on one HP anyway, it was always gonna be KO'd, uh, but notably as well, our Mega Revolve that could have done some big damage if it had HP remaining. Um, but it now does give Javier the option to bring back in that Lunala. And with the Metagross Lunala combination against Happy Finney, it's going to be able to take this game one. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, this is like a really interesting match. Like mm -hmm. uh, this time around, it worked out pretty well for Javier. He, yes. he got the key turns right this time around. Uh, I'm really curious if uh, uh, Eric will play as defensively as he did right now mm -hmm. uh, in the next game or if he is going to transition. But first, yeah, we see the fourth way <laughs> there. Uh, it could have gone the, the other way around if uh, Eric went a bit more aggressive. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, you've just thought he went quite defensively and you're yeah. quite right, he changed his style as that game went on. Turn zero and turn one, Eric played to perfection. Yes. You know, not protecting his ground on, going for the Geomancy on the Xerneas and he looked to be in such a strong position. And potentially if he'd maybe played a little bit more aggressively as he kind of boldly started the game at, yeah. um, he could have been able to start picking up those KOs and not leaving himself pinned down by what Javier was doing with his switches. Um, but unfortunately, going on that defensive just left Javier free to start making his predictions and his calls and starting to go through the team the way that he did. Um, yeah. But, you know, Javier is now one game away from these grand finals. Oh, yeah, he is. Uh, I really do like how he, he took care of the Groudon, mm -hmm. which threatened uh, the Metagross a lot. Yes. Uh, and uh, I really do like... Mm, well... I doubt we're gonna see the target tomorrow, unfortunately. That's no? okay. I, I can, I can okay live with that. Yeah. Because I have to agree with you. I thought the four Pokemon that Javier brought were the yeah. perfect match for this game. Yeah. Um, like you said, having that Metagross, we're using that Hammer Arm as well to great effect with even just getting rid of that Incineroar that can be such a tricky Pokemon um, against this Metagross once it has Mega Evolved as well. And you know, yeah. you wanna get the stat boost that you get from Mega Evolving as well. You wanna have that on the field and don't wanna have to deal with then taking the Intimidates, obviously, when you're un yeah. unmega evolved as the Metagross, you don't have to worry about them at all, thanks to Clear Body. But um, I think he played so well maneuvering around that. And if I was Eric, I don't know if I'd change up my leads mm -hmm. because you could potentially see something in game two where they have the same Pokemon and then you go yeah. back to those mind games. Um, but again, Eric, he's so well versed with this team. Um, he could come up with something else, but instead going to stick with what he went with yes. game one 
Xerneas and Groudon as Lunala and Tapu Fini go mm -hmm. out for Javier. Once again, so we get the same situation. Mm -hmm. Again, the Tapu Fini is on the board, pressuring potential Groudon switch ins. Lunala is on the board, uh, being able to use Magic Room. But if he does that, uh, Groudon is pretty safe in front <laughs> of uh, Lunala and Tapu Fini. So this is uh, where Eric uh, can capitalize most of, I guess, like if you predicts the magic yes. room, then the Groudon is pretty much free to stay on the board longer. Exactly. It's going to come down to magic room or geomancy. Wh what is Eric going to do with the Xerneas? If he predicts the magic room, you don't want to go for the, uh, the geomancy. You want to start dealing out some damage. And we saw already how much a Moonblast did yeah. to both the Lunala and the Tapu Fini. It can do some good work even without the boost. Um, but with that boost, it can be so, so critical. Um, you don't want to get trapped into that turn two geomancy, um, particularly um, if Tapu Fini has got some extra tricks up its sleeve, we've already seen that it's quite a per quirky one there for Javier. Lunala, however, just going to go for what it did in game one. Yeah. Moon Guy's Beam up in the air. Going to target down into the Groudon this time. Going to deal a good chunk of damage as Xerneas does go for the Moonblast. So maybe thinking Strangely. that this was the Magic Room turn. Um, I'm going to break that Shadow Shield on Lunala. Something that Eric did struggle to do in the previous mm -hmm. game as well. That could have worked against him a little bit. Um, and Groudon this time <laughs> as well. Being more accurate with those Precipice Blades. Lunala's yes. not escaping this time. So this time around, it worked out. <laughs> it worked out pretty well for uh, Eric. Uh, he knew that there might there might be magic room, mm -hmm. but uh, if it's coming, uh, I capitalize a lot. So he he just straight up went on the offensive, uh, going for for uh, the strong ground type attacks and the strong moon blast. Uh, that haze is interesting. It covered yeah. the geomancy option. Uh, as well as um, bringing Lunala back to its normal special attack stat. Yeah, exactly. Um, revealing that haze as well, preparing yourself in case Geomancy did go off there. Um, Lunala, of course, locked into that Moon Guy's Beam, now going to jump right back up into the sky, um, going into that Xerneas this time, Groudon protecting, um, but Javier calling that protect and going into the other target. Xerneas going to take a good chunk of damage, not quite 50% here, um, and is now going for that Geomancy. Now, does Javier predict that's going to happen and go for haze yeah. again? Mm. If he wants to cover the Geomancy, he mm. has to go for Haze, I guess. But because if he, if he just uh, goes for Moonblast, it will not be enough to uh, uh, KO the Xerneas. So if he wants to cover that, he goes for Haze once again. But I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, there we see it. I mean, Eric, knowing that that is a choice scarf, Lunala locked into Moon Guy's Beam, doesn't have to yeah. fear Magic Rune this turn as well, so the Geomancy did look kind of safe. Um, but Javier going, no, if that's what you're going to go for, I'm going to also haze you away here. Yeah. Um, so potentially, Eric, trying to play it, like we were saying previously, trying to play it a little bit more aggressively in this game, um, maybe thinking that Javier wouldn't expect him to do it as it was such a kind of obvious play with the... Um, yeah. Magic Room not going to be in effect. Groudon, however, going to leave the field protected last turn. Going to go back to the Pokeball as Eric now brings in the Incineroar on this turn. Going to fire off Intimidate, so aren't going to be valid. But crucially, I think having that fake out on the Tapu Fini going forward. Yeah, uh, I think that is really clever, preserving the Groudon. Because if Javier once again uh, brought the Metagross showing the Hammer Arm, uh, this indicates that there is no stomping tantrum on the Meta Cross, uh, so that Groudon uh, is one way to win the game. Uh, and he starts chipping the Pokemon uh, and even taking KOs on uh, the Lunala in this time uh, with the Xerneas, unboosted Xerneas, but we do see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love seeing the C move here. It's going to be Vortarium C, Tapu Fini. Um, obviously, the Hydro Vortex is going to be a big dealing water type move here. Yeah. Um, and not something we've seen on Tapu Fini for a while. I had a rise in previous years, but it's the perfect way to take down this Incineroar. Oh, this cup you catch <laughs> uh, Eric pretty well here. He expected the crowd on to switch out. Yes. He covered that slot perfectly, uh, knowing that the Xerneas is not a big threat and he wanted to get rid of the Incineroar so uh, his Metagross is safe from getting intimidated mm -hmm. and being his win condition maybe once again against the Xerneas uh, and the Rayquaza now pressures the potential Groudon uh, coming in that's why Eric is sending in the Gengar instead mm -hmm. so uh, really, really cleverly played on both sides of the field there. Exactly. I think you're quite right there Sevi. He knew he had to get rid of that Incineroar so that his Metagross could have a better time later on them. 
fingers crossed that is his fourth and final Pokemon in the back there. Um, Rayquaza, of course, joining onto the field can apply a good amount of pressure with those Dragon Ascents again. Um, something that Gengar being, you know, it's a great um, special offensive Pokemon, yeah. but it doesn't have the best defenses. Yeah. Um, and if it is the, obviously the Mega variant, um, it's not going to have something like a Focus Sash and a Dragon Ascent is going to deal a huge amount of damage back to it. Um, Xerneas, of course, does have to worry about that as well, um, particularly as Rayquaza has the Focus Sash. So if you want to remove it from the field, if you're Eric, you're going to have to find a way to double into it. Yeah. Yeah, I, re I really, I really uh, like where Eric is going there. Uh, he sends in Gengar, and he, if he knows that Javier uh, leaves the Xerneas pretty much alone, the Xerneas is always free mm -hmm. to just starting attacking and uh, taking the second knockout. Uh, there by taking out the Tapofini and now we have a Mega Gengar and Xerneas and uh, everybody who knows that team <laughs> may know the special move that uh, Mega Gengar runs. Exactly, particularly as Eric has now kind of pinned down Javier to his last two Pokemon. If that Gengar is running something like a Perish Song, yes. um, it's going to be able to obviously sing his little song and then allow Eric to have the maneuverability to switch out his Pokemon so that they won't be KO'd after the three turns. Um, whereas the Metagross and Rayquaza on Javier's side it are going to have to stay on the field. They're going to have to find a way to KO Eric's Pokemon before the Perish Song expires on their side of the field. Um, otherwise, it is going to be the game going straight to Eric. So this Gengar is one to watch at the moment, but it does have to be able to um, get that move off and able to keep his team alive yep. while the Metagross and Rayquaza are obviously fighting it out with the battle here. Well, Rayquaza and Metagross st still pressure uh, mm -hmm. all Pokemon on Eric's side on the field uh, really hard. So if uh, Javier manages to get one knockout, uh, then Eric has to, if he wins that road, if he goes that road, no, he go doesn't. Uh, he had to play like really cautious uh, to not get knocked out in, in return, but that's why Gengar straight goes for the Shadow Ball into the Rayquaza. Yeah, I actually really like this play here from Eric, just going straight on the defense, um, offensive. Doesn't have to worry about any switching. The Iron Head picking up the clean KO against that Xerneas um, and getting the Focus Sash broken on the Rayquaza as well is going to be critical going forward. The Dragon Ascent though coming out, not actually picking up the KO against that Gengar, um, able to hang on a little bit here yeah. um, as the Misty Terrain, of course, leaves the field. But again, you still have to worry now about something like a Bullet Punch from that Metagross yeah. going into that Gengar. It is not the most defensive Pokemon. Um, and then, of course, Groudon here on the field as well, going to bring the Sunshine back into the action. Uh, we still got airlock from uh, the Rayquaza, mm -hmm. so we w we get the sunny animation, but it doesn't even matter that much uh, as long as Rayquaza is on the field. Uh, we have seen uh, that Rayquaza running uh, Earth Power, so yes. we still Javier still has the offensive pressure on the board, and uh, if he gets uh, the protects correct, mm -hmm. uh, he he could heal it. But on the other hand, that there are still options for Eric. Uh, we've seen Shadow Ball threatening the Metagross a lot. Uh, of course, Groudon threatening the Metagross a lot. So that Rayquaza has to take up both Pokemon uh, to let Metagross <laughs> shine, kind of. <laughs> yeah, Bullet Punch coming out here from the Metagross into the Gengar. Uh, going to nicely pick up the KO there against Gengar. Now, Rayquaza sometimes has access to something like Waterfall, but actually, <laughs> it's going to be Sir from this mixed variant. Rayquaza, oh, this is a move I have not seen in such a long time. Yes, it hits your partner Pokemon, but Metagross can take that. Groudon times four, weak, 